Hello everyone and good morning. My name is uh, Per von Menzer and uh, I am the CEO of Farmnovo AB, a today clinical stage drug development company. Uh, founded in 2008 by Bengt von Menzer after almost 30 years as a drug discovery leader at AstraZeneca. I'm very proud today to uh, present Farmnovo and our lead candidate PN6047 which is a new drug for neuropathic pain treatment with first-in-class potential. Uh, in short, uh, Farmnovo develops uh, new, very innovative drugs for neuropathic pain treatments. And in 2022, we raised uh, some 7 million euros to finance phase one clinical trials, as well as build up of the company. Our phase one study started in August and we do expect the headline results in Q2 2023. In parallel now, we are intensively preparing for our phase 2A proof of concept studies that are planned to start in Q2 2024. And in the last 12 to 18 months, we have built up our team uh, significantly. Uh, today we have a board with uh, a lot of experience from drug development and we have included also in the board uh, two representatives from Alm Invest and Karolinska Development. And the most uh, recent additions to the team are actually a pain specialist, Jarko Kaliumaki, with uh, uh, a long experience from uh, pain drug development at AstraZeneca. And also Inge Tarnov, uh, who is also here today, our new global project leader. All members in the team have over 20 years uh, of experience from drug development in various pharma companies. Now let's talk about uh, neuropathic pain. It's a fact that there is a, a huge unmet medical need uh, for patients suffering from neuropathic pain. And neuropathic pain often ruins these people's lives and the lives of their families. It affects up to 10% uh, of the adult population worldwide. And unfortunately, uh, current treatments uh, such as anti-epileptics and antidepressants that are not initially developed for neuropathic pain treatments are only poorly effective <coughs> and associated with oftentimes quite severe side effects. We are targeting uh, the symptom of allodynia in neuropathic pain. And that is pain on the skin from something that shouldn't be painful at all. It's uh, commonly experienced by uh, patients, neuropathic pain sufferers, that are suffering from uh, shingles, diabetic neuropathy, trauma, as well as migraine. And interesting enough, in uh, animal models in the preclinical studies, we can see very effective blockade of allodynia with PN6047. We'll come back to how that works. So we have developed a new innovative drug with a novel mode of action. It activates the delta opioid receptors, so it's called a DORA. And as I said, in preclinical studies, we see very effective blockade of allodynia in neuropathic pain. So, how does it work? Yeah, our lead candidate, PN6047, is a novel, very selective uh, DORA. And it's important to remember that all opioids are not the same. They actually activate different receptors. And if we look at uh, this image here, the green guy to the right is the kappa receptor, which is of little interest because it's not involved in pain relief. The mu receptor in the middle is the one uh, predominantly activated by traditional uh, medicines for pain and uh, the medicines like morphine and oxycodone, and the, all that family. These are very effective in acute pain relief, but they're also associated with uh, euphoria which can lead to addiction. And um, they also uh, show tolerance buildup 
which means that there is a risk of constantly improving or increasing the doses, which can lead to fatal side effects, such as respiratory depression. And this is all what you know about in the opioid crisis uh, globally. PN6047 activates uh, the delta receptor, and the delta receptor is remarkable in reducing chronic pain and neuropathic pain. So it gives fantastic pain relief in our models. And on top of that, it's not associated with any of the side effects that are associated with the mu receptor. Doesn't that sound quite interesting? Another property that we have built into PN6047, which is unique for our compound, is um, called biased signaling. So it's, it's actually designed for maximum benefit. Uh, this image here shows um, a delta receptor that is activated by PN6047. And um, the activation can, uh, can go through two different biochemical pathways, if we generalize it. Either the green pathway, which is through uh, G proteins, where we see the pharmac pharmacology that we want to see. So we see their pain relief, some antidepressant effects, maybe even some anti-migraine effects. And uh, the uh, pathway over the gray area here, the arresting route, that's associated with uh, the likelihood of tolerance buildup, but also some side effects that are unwanted, such as the risk of seizure. So PN6047 is predominantly signaling via the G protein. And the combination of the selectivity and the bias signaling is the uniqueness of the compound. I forgot to mention that in the previous slide, but um, PN6047 is 100,000 fold selective on the delta receptor. So it basically doesn't touch the mu receptor. Just a few, <coughs> just a few effect data. Uh, Preclinically, uh, in uh, the sciatic nerve ligation model, which is a, a very commonly used model for efficacy, we've seen uh, that PN6047 progressively reduces uh, allodynia in neuropathic pain very effectively and uh, uh, have a very high efficacy even in low, low dosages uh, per kilo. And more importantly also is that uh, we see no tolerance buildup. We see the same effect being retained over almost three weeks of treatments in the preclinical models. In this uh, slide to the left, we have a, a, a slide illustrating the uh, regulatory toxicology performed prior to entry in phase one. And that uh, shows very low toxicity for PN6047. On the right hand side, uh, some additional graphs from the uh, rat pain model that I talked about that shows uh, very high efficacy. And if we combine these two sets of data, we have a compound that shows high efficacy and low toxicity and a very, very robust safety margin, which we benefit from when we now are into the clinic. As I said initially, we, we did start uh, our phase one clinical trials and um, we are running the phase one with SAD and MAD under a common protocol with uh, the MAD planned to be run in parallel with the second part of the SAD studies. And as I said earlier, uh, with expected results, headline results in Q2 2023. So we are in an extremely exciting period right now. We actually completed the first five SAD uh, cohorts. And uh, if I remember right, Inge, we started our MAD one this week. Yeah. And... Uh, we see a very good tolerability and no adverse events at this stage. So it's very promising. So to summarize uh, this very short uh, presentation, uh, our lead candidate um, shows 
very, very high efficacy. It's potent in animal models. Uh, there is no analgesic tolerance, so no tolerance buildup, which is, of course, one of the secrets of uh, potential success. And we have no unwanted side effects similar to those uh, associated with the traditional opioids targeting the mu receptor. Our first target is neuropathic pain and the symptom of allodynia. But we also see additional targets in other chronic pain states, as well as in migraine, anxiety, and chronic cough. Looking ahead, uh, following a successful phase one, uh, we plan to start phase two uh, A, proof of concept studies in Q2 2024. And to finance that, we're aiming for a capital raise uh, of around 15 million euros to be performed by mid next year. And following successful proof of concept studies, our aim is to seek partnering with pharma companies for um, continued development and commercialization of the PN6047. That could be either through out licensing or a trade sale. So to summarize very quickly, Farmnovo and PN6047 is a great investment opportunity. We do target a major unmet medical need in a large and growing market. 6047 has definitely a potential to become a new first-in-class drug. We hold patent protection in all major markets until 2041, including expected extensions. And finally, and last but not least, we do have a team with a very long experience in drug development. Thank you for listening. Thank you. So you're specializing in neuropathic pain. How come you've chosen that? And would it work in any other types of pain? <clears throat> That's a very good question. Um, when I joined the company, uh, we had a slightly broader um, perspective uh, looking at chronic pain in general. And we do believe that we would have effect in most chronic pain states. The reason we are focusing on neuropathic pain is that we here see in, in discussion with our uh, expert advisors, the highest likelihood of proving efficacy. So uh, in neuropathic pain and, and the symptom of allodynia, patient recruitment uh, is uh, concrete, so to speak. These patients have very clear symptoms. And uh, if we find relief in these patients, it would be a high likelihood of success. Okay. So it's really, it's a, really a strategic narrowing down, you could say. I understand. Yeah. Hi, Per. Uh, great data. <laughs> uh, as you know, I like pain as well. But uh, how do you measure pain? How we measure pain? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the outcome of the clinical study has to measure pain, right? So yeah. do you do it objectively or subjectively or how? I mean, anyone who's been involved in pain knows that uh, it's a difficult area. And uh, most of the measurements are different kind of pain scores and questionnaires, etc. But uh, linked to your question, Cecilia, um, we are designing a phase 2A clinical uh, trial where we will use semi-quantitative testing. And that's also the reason for, for selecting allodynia and neuropathic pain. There are methodologies that are today accepted by EMA, for example, where you can use um, different kind of measurements where you can actually test the sensitivity. So is the sensitivity in the skin still there or is it reduced? So that's an answer to your question. Um, you mentioned there was no buildup of analgesic uh, tolerability. So the patients essentially won't get addicted to the, the treatment. How does this compare to the current treatments that are being prescribed in the US, as I assume that would be your major population that you're going after? Um, yeah, this is one of the key things, of course. Um, anyone who's taken morphine themselves, they know that uh, the effect wears away quite quickly. So after only a few days, you need to escalate very significantly. So um, if you talk about pain relief medicines uh, and, and morphine analogs, uh, there you have that very, very big uh, uh, challenge. Um, we have so far done some preclinical studies, of course, um, checking this. And we've seen that the effect is retained over almost three weeks of 
of dosing. And, and that's, that's what we have today. Um, so far, we don't know what's going to happen in humans, but I assume that it will be similar. Then I would like to ask you what the competition looks like in this area. Yeah, uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, there are so many different um, ways to try and, and treat uh, this uh, huge problem. Uh, but if we look at the, um, the very narrow competition, if we look at Delta opioid receptor agonists, there are a few um, projects in the market. There is a um, consortium in Japan driving one project and there is one company in the US called Trevina that is also running a Delta agonist actually. Um, they were on their way into phase two study that was halted under COVID due to pa patient recruitment problems and I think financing problems at that time. <laughs> but um, if you then look at uh, the scope of um, attempts, uh, it's of course very wide. So neuropathic pain is uh, in focus. I saw Mike moving, so I'm guessing there's a question up there. <laughs> Hi, Per. Um, just wondering, in terms of the proof of concept study, when you design it, do, do you plan to test the efficacy on top of the standard of care treatment, or like I think like gabapentin, etc., or like patient who've probably failed um, the, the the first line treatment? Um, it's a bit early to. Um <laughs> to talk about that because we're actually designing the studies right now. Um, we are, as I, as I mentioned, we are planning to, to run studies where we are uh, selecting patients with, with allodynia. So it means that there is a quite significant screening process to actually screen out the most relevant patients that also would, would answer and be uh, subject to the quantitative sensory testing. So that's where we stand today. And um, the, full, the full study design has not been completed yet. So I'll, we'll come back to that. You can, you can phone me in a, in a month or two. So you mentioned the opioid crisis, opioid phobia. Have you had discussions with the regulators how you will differentiate this? You show some of the pharmacology, but in the minds of people, it will be still an opioid. So have you had discussions how you will differentiate and sell this? Uh, no, we haven't had that uh, discussion yet, but we are, we are closing in on it, so to speak. So that we, we are planning uh, several interactions in the near future. And I think we recognize the challenge. Um, everybody hearing the word opioid thinks that this is dangerous, but in fact, this is something quite different. So all opioids are not the same, but uh, it's a good question. It's coming very soon now. Uh, Thank you so much, Fer. Thank you. Thank you.